the story of the Ewok adventure. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it's time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. The tiny forest moon of Endor is home to a race of small furry creatures known as Ewoks. The Ewoks live in simple tree huts and lead peaceful lives. One night, an Ewok family stumbled upon a crashed star cruiser deep in the forest. Deej, the father Ewok, sniffed carefully at the ship. Hearing a tiny cough, he peered inside and found a frightened, sick little girl. Deej held out his paw to her. As the Ewoks gently picked up the girl, a laser blast tore through the cabin. Hey! Put my sister down, you overgrown teddy bear! A young boy stood in the doorway, holding a laser gun. The little girl coughed. It's all right, Maeve. I think they want to help us. Besides, Maybe they know where Mom and Dad are. <laughs> well, okay, but I'm going to watch these little furballs. In a simple hut in their village, the Ewoks nursed the tiny girl back to health. Deej's youngest son, Wicket, was sitting by her side and holding her hand when Mace came up behind him. Scram! Get out of here, mop face! Wicket dashed over to hide behind his mother's legs. You feel better, Sindel? I don't trust these weird fuzzy things. They can't even talk right. Day by day, Sindel got better until one day she felt strong enough to play with Wicked and his pet animals. But Mace was still uncomfortable with the Ewoks. Listen, sis, we should get out of here pretty soon. Mom and Dad might be waiting at the Star Cruiser. Wicked giggled excitedly. Sindel gasped and turned to Mace. Did you hear that? He spoke. Big deal. We've got to get back to where we crashed. Wicket cocked his head. <laughs> Late that night, the two children sneaked out of the Ewok's hut and crept through the dark forest. They hadn't gone far when they heard a low growl behind them. Suddenly, a huge bora crashed out of the woods, its fierce eyes blazing and its sharp fangs bare. Run, Sindel! Head for that hollow tree! The children ducked into the tree, just as the creature swung a mighty claw at them. All night long, the boar tore at the tree, but it couldn't reach the children. Then it died. There was a big commotion. Sindel peeked outside to see the Ewoks battling the beast. They drove it back with spears as it snapped at them fiercely. Finally, the brave Ewoks won the fight. Mace saw a charm hanging from the borough's neck. Look! It's Mom and Dad's life monitor, and the light's still on! They're alive! But where could they be? Wanting to help the children, Deej took them to Logre, the medicine man. The old gray Ewok peered into a strange candlelit spinner. Simba stared in wonder as an image started to take shape in the twirling windows. Mace, it's Mommy and Daddy. They're trapped in a cage somewhere. And there's a giant monster there. Mace turned frantically to Logre. Where are they? Can you tell? In answer, the image slowly changed to a set of dark cliffs. Logre pointed to a map to show Deej where the cliffs were. Sindel watched as Deej looked to his sons and then nodded. Oh, Mace, they're going to help us find Mommy and Daddy. The next day, Wicked's mother looked on sadly as her husband and sons prepared for their long journey. As they loaded up their horses, Logre paid them an unexpected visit. The medicine man solemnly handed a special item to each member of the party. To Deej's older son, Logre gave warrior ear wings. To Wicked, he gave a magic walking stick. And to Sindel, he gave an eternal candle. Then Logre handed Deej a tooth and a staff crown. Mace picked up the last item. A rock? That's what I get? I don't need these stupid rocks. Mace tossed it over his shoulder. The caravan wound through the thick forest. Suddenly, a huge tree fell in the party's path. <laughs> a tall, stocky Ewok named Chuka ambled from the woods, proudly carrying his hatchet. Mace faced the furry lumberjack. Hey, you almost killed. 
know that. Chuka tweaked Lisa's nose playfully. Deej handed the lumberjack a special tooth for low grade. It fit right into a place on Chuka's necklace. The rugged Ewok nodded and joined the caravan. Later in the journey, the group came upon Kink, an Ewok priestess. Deej explained their quest to Kink and gave her the staff crown. As a test, the mystic handed the crown to Mace. Magically, it became an ugly lizard. Mace leaped back. Hey, get rid of that thing! But when Sindel picked it up, it turned into a delicate white mouse. Taking the staff crown back, Kink smiled and put it on her staff. A perfect fit. Now there were eight adventurers. Mace felt dejected. Nobody takes me seriously. I wish Mom and Dad were here. The young boy bent down to gaze at his reflection in a pond. Slowly, he extended his finger and touched the water's surface. Suddenly, a pond pulled Mace right in. The boy was trapped beneath the pond. Mace pounded on the surface with all his might, but he couldn't escape. Chuka tossed vines and branches into the enchanted pond, but the water just dissolved them. Finally, Wicket timidly poked his magic walking stick into the pond. He felt a tug, seeing the rush to his side. Hi, everybody! Slowly, Mace came out of the pond. The boy smiled shyly at Wicket. You saved my life. Thanks. Wicket patted Mace's head. <laughs> <laughs>